Welcome to TI Now, live today from Mobile World Congress Americas 2017 here in San Francisco. I'm with Durga Malati of Qualcomm, Senior Vice President of Engineering. Thanks so much, Durga, for Thank joining you. us today. Glad to be uh, here. Today we would like to talk a bit about the, the current state of cellular, cellular V to X, uh, and maybe you can give us a bit of an update on that. Sure. Cellular V2X was first uh, originally standardized in 3GPP as a part of release 14. Specifications were completed uh, earlier this year, a lot of the core specs done by last year. It is the first time that uh, the cellular industry took a stab at exactly how vehicles can communicate with each other, along with the network and with infrastructure and pedestrians around them. A lot of new paradigms were actually brought into the picture with this. Uh, the ability for vehicles to communicate regardless of whether there's a network present or not, whether there is an operator SIM present or not, this is in the V2V mode. So this is a direct mode of communication. This is in addition to the other modes wherein the vehicle communicates with the network, with pedestrians, and when we say infrastructure, the infrastructure here might be uh, traffic lights, stop signs, and those sorts. So this is the first time that uh, the cellular industry came out with a spec for this. And uh, as we are moving ahead, it has an evolution path that started off in Re release 14, but will continue to evolve. So for instance, there's existing work in release 15, which is an evolution of what was done in release 14. And then 5G NR is coming along, and there'll be a 5G version of V2X, the studies for which will start in a few months from now onwards. So it's got a strong evolution path, but the first generation of the specifications are already completed. Durga, talking about the transition and the roadmap forward to 5G, can you tell us some more details? Uh, from a use case perspective, what type of uh, scenarios would require a full, fully 5G baked solution? Sure, so 5G, the first version of 5G will be completed as a part of release 15. A lot of the work that's going on is going to lay the foundation for where we will end up with uh, V2X, uh, 5G based V2X. So today when we talk of 5G for mobile broadband, we talk about large bandwidths, very high data rates, very low latencies, all the way down to sub one millisecond. Now what we are doing on top of that is adding in what's called as ultra reliable low latency communication. So not only are we paying attention to the latency, we also want to make sure that the messages are extremely reliable in conjunction with that low latency. This feature, while it is important for mobile broadband, will set the foundation for where we want to go with V2X tomorrow. So I mentioned earlier that release 14 V2X when it was completed, it's going to have this evolution path as we move towards into 5G as well. So let's say that in release 16, we finished the 5G version of V2X. We're designing it in such a way that A, it's compatible with, uh, backward compatible with everything that we've done in release 14 as well. So because we'll have a mix and match of vehicles on the road with that. But the second part is that as we look at the kinds of use cases that we might envision for uh, 5G based V2X, this could range from things like sharing sensor information between vehicles in close proximity with each other. So they are in unicast communication with each other. They could be sharing what is known as intent. So in other words, instead of showing a light indicator to say that you're going from lane A to lane B, you could actually simply send a message and that message is received not just by the vehicle behind you, but all the vehicles around you. And it enables you to do a much better path planning. And that takes us into the road towards autonomous driving. From our standpoint, when these capabilities, very high bandwidth, high data rates, low latencies, and very high reliability, a combination of these features we think are going to be critical as we go into the next phase of autonomous driving, where radios will play a complementary role along with all the other sensors, including cameras and so on, in the vehicle itself. That's the, that's the hope and that's the goal. When you think about uh, 4G, 5G, uh, in the context of DSRC, uh, when you think about the automakers and the applications and the types of services they might deploy on those, uh, could you give us some insight on that? Sure, so if you think about it, back maybe a decade ago and so on, uh, there weren't as many cars that were connected. Today we see increasingly cars are connected. What that means is that there's already a cellular modem that is inbuilt into the vehicle itself. So it's a natural question to ask at that point in time, what else can an automaker do if you already have a connected vehicle? That connection, of course, is to the network, but you can now potentially add in features like vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle connectivity as well. So a lot of automakers, everyone is looking at what is possible uh, with V2X as you take an existing telematics modem and then add in the V2X capability, V2V capability to it. When we recently made an announcement, we before doing the, uh, let me before getting into the announcement itself on our chipset, as we were designing 
the standards and, and standardizing it in, in 3GPP. We also wanted to make sure that it's a pretty uh, inclusive process. So large numbers of automakers, tier one, vendor, tier one vendors and so on, were a part of this spec making process and we created a consortium called 5GAA. That's where these debates are occurring. What use cases can we actually uh, unleash once we have this capability inside the vehicle? And uh, today we are at a point where there is an increasing appetite to test the system out uh, uh, beyond just the design and standards phase, but out there with tier one vendors and the full-blown ITS stack as a part of it. When you think about the, uh, the core functionality of a connected vehicle, what, what is uh, reality today and what's really in R&D? So as far as the release 14 part of the specifications are concerned, that's out of the R&D and standardization phase. It's uh, firmly into the implementation phase and we are now at a point of, we just made a recent chipset announcement for 9150, which uh, is our first chipset with cellular fee 2 x uh, release 14 version of the standard that enables automakers and tier one vendors to test the technology on the road regulators to see how it behaves and how it works, leading towards commercialization at some point in time. I mean, those timelines are of course dependent upon a large number of factors, but that's a step that we have taken at this point. So we are firmly on the path of trialing and testing leading into commercialization with the release 14, the first version of the CV2X specs. And, and speaking of timelines, you know, uh, the last car I owned, I owned for 22 years. Uh, and you know, I look at the behavior of car ownership over a lifespan of, uh, of, of that, and uh, can we talk a bit about uh, the technology innovation uh, moves at a certain pace, much quicker certainly than my ownership of a vehicle and many others I would imagine. How do uh, we remain current from a technology perspective? So this is, this is actually a very important aspect. Uh, the longevity of devices, typically when we talk of smartphones, it's a slightly different structure, but when we talk of longevity of vehicles, it's important to make sure that the design is such that there is both forward and backward compatibility. Picture a scenario five years from now where maybe we have uh, release 14 CV2X based vehicles. We also have 5G based, say, release 16 CV2X vehicles. Well, they ought to be able to communicate with each other and in conjunction with doing other services. So the way we've designed this is such that release 16 is going to be backward compatible with release 14. They actually can uh, talk to each other. Vehicles can communicate with each other. So if you are a release 16 5G based V2X vehicle, you'll be able to talk to a release 14 V2X vehicle. At the same time, using a different waveform, that, that release 16 vehicle can talk to other release 16 vehicles as well. That's what we mean by forward and backward compatibility. And that's a very important aspect when we look at such verticals where longevity of devices is going to be uh, here to stay. Dragon Malati, Qualcomm, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.